times power of God um, may look like madness. When you see people who are really into the things of God, it looks like they have nothing else to do with their lives. It almost looks like a religious indoctrination, as though something has happened to your sanity and you've thrown yourself and literally plunged yourself into the things of God. Now, I must balance this by telling you that there is wasteful fanatism. There is an angle to the Christian experience that has been wrongly communicated. And it looks like zeal. It carries a semblance of zeal. But that ends up leaving an individual frustrated, wasted, with no sense of profit, not for himself, nor the kingdom. This is not what we're advocating. There is, there is a useful press that is by revelation, with order and grace, passion for God that has results to show. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I think it was, um, was it during the UK conference, I recall, uh, teaching the reason as to why I believe that people, uh, there was a growing disdain for the church, especially um, across Europe. And we identified a few reasons, I recall. Number one, I said that the reason why I believed that many believers or many people seem to frown and fold their mats as far as coming to church was concerned was number one because of character inconsistencies on the part of the vessels character inconsistencies and that also extends to extra biblical principles and practices practices that are inconsistent um, with the word of god i remember that number two i said that the absence of word-based intelligent life applicable teachings are we together that provide real solutions to people's needs i hope you realize that every time you are teaching people you are not acting a movie you are not acting as a pastor you are a pastor you are not acting as a man of god you are a man of god the members are not acting as members they are people who have come hungry to receive and let me tell you, every man's need is his point of contact. You must communicate truths that are number one, word-based, number two, intelligently presented, number three, life applicable. There must be a point of application behind every sermon, every teaching, every communication that comes from this altar or any altar in God's mind the recipients should be able to know how they can apply that truth in their life to improve them to help them know god help them become better believers and generally to excel in life and destiny and number three i said in that conference how that the absence of the power of god to prove and defend the things we claim god can do there are lots of spiritual propositions as to what we claim God is and what we claim he is able to do. And so as members continue to shout amen from Sunday to Sunday, Wednesday to Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, any other day at all that allows for these kinds of gathering. When people shout amen, they want their lives to capture testimonies that prove that God can do what he says. And if people remain indefinitely disappointed week after week with loud shouts of amen, without testimonies, without uh, proof of advancement in their lives, eventually they will be frustrated. Hallelujah. Um, it is one of the reasons why people still hold on to witchcraft and all kinds of satanic, demonic, occultic practices because they are not sure it is a worthy risk to leave Satan completely and press into God. So there are a few people who are not interested in God at all. There are others who are interested in God, but using the lens of our current context of ministry, they are not sure that God can heal that far, can save that far, can lift that far. So on one hand, they hold on to the Christian faith, but on another hand, they still hold on to satanic occultic practices. Whichever profits them at any given time is their interest. 
So it's an uncomfortable truth, but you have the church still full of people who love Jesus, shout amen, sometimes roll under the anointing, sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, open their Bibles, and then close and go back. And then weekday or any other day, they find themselves dabbling in activities of witchcraft, wrong practices that are clearly satanic, occultic. And in all fairness, as a man of God, you have no right to just point fingers at them and say you are wrong until we are able to import into our experience the power of God that becomes a more superior alternative. If I tell someone, leave witchcraft, I must propose an alternative that works. Can I tell you, you never have to struggle marketing what works. The greatest way to market things is to tell the truth. Truth is the greatest weapon for marketing any product. Are we together? Yeah. I don't need to manipulate you if I know the potency of whatever product it is. You just taste and see when you enjoy that product by yourself. You now even call others and say, come and join me in this experience. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ that these days of his power that the church has stepped into now, there is, you know by now, a global awakening that is happening. And thankfully speaking, that awakening is being spearheaded by the African continent. There is such a mighty move of the spirit from nation to nation, region to region, God has raised people and he's still raising others, people who have been furnished through the furnace of affliction and built by the Spirit to communicate different dimensions of his grace to the nations. And so it's a rare privilege that God has given us and we must never take for granted the privilege and the opportunity to reveal Jesus, the real Jesus, the complete Jesus. Are we together? In a way and manner that brings glory to the name of the Lord. And so we thank him for what he's doing in and through our lives, the mighty testimonies that are happening. And tonight I'm praying that what you are going to hear, the teaching tonight came from a very deep contemplation. Sometimes when I'm all by myself, I just take the time to think. I think about many things. I think about myself. I think about you. I think about God. I think about his program. I think about unbelieving world i think about several things and sometimes from these thoughts would come very deep communications contemplations of the spirit and many times god would instruct my heart to create sermons out of these contemplations and what you are hearing tonight is one of such experiences so i am praying that in the name of jesus your heart be open to learn your heart be open to receive i'm teaching tonight